And so the idea here is that I post this on YouTube with the least amount of editing. And if you want it That's down, I can take it down if you don't like it for whatever reason. Or if you like it for now, but six months later you don't like it, I'll still take it down. It's okay with me. Okay. I want to share my my experience, what I was taking and uh, stuff like that. So if other people can benefit from that, I don't mind. Right. Yeah, it's pretty phenomenal what you went through um, initially with the supplement, with the Nanobac TX. So as you talk, I'll, I'll be typing, taking notes, because this is still a legitimate visit, you know. Okay. So, yeah, so um, why don't you start at the beginning? So the first time that we talked, right now it's November 8th, and we first talked um, September 27th, and I had you start the Nanobac TX for this. coronary artery triple vessel disease on the angiogram. Yes. Yeah, and then I got your labs too. Like they're phenomenal now. Yes, crazy. I mean I, I'm surprised now uh, after seeing my lab test that was done last week. Yeah, so go ahead and start. You tell your story. Okay, um, like what happened with me, or yeah, you started the Nanobac TX, and then you you told me this yes, okay, was gone. This pain was gone. This pain was gone. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, I started as you prescribed me Nanobac TX, and uh, previously I was not really that fit, not really that kind of amount of energy in me. But still, I was doing okay with my walks and everything in the morning, around five to eight miles every morning. Uh, I was okay with that, but I was not feeling that full. That what I mean that energy in my body but the more and i had i had back ache like like my left shoulder blade there was it was the ache was always there okay yeah. it was not very um square kind of but it was there and my left ear there was a, a pain in that as well it was not pain continuous pain but there was pain there some i thought there's some infection in there but the day I started taking Nanobac TX, um, within that the ear pain gone within three days or four days, for sure. And the back pain, which was there, I mean, it was on an every day the back pain was there. But after taking Nanobac TX, it completely went. Now I sometime, I mean, once a week, I do get that but not on a regular basis as I used to get. Okay. And then uh, last week, uh, I was uh, called by my surgery. I mean, the hospital, they wanted to do pre-assessment for my surgery, which they still I'm on a waiting list for another two months or so. That's what they say. And they run a test, a lot of blood tests they were run, and they did my echo as well. They did my blood test. They did my... U.S. Doppler, some tests, some for my veins on my neck, and they did um, my chest x-rays as well. I'm still waiting for those results, but my blood results, they came, I mean, next day. And I was, like, pretty much happy with what I saw, like my triglyceride, as far as the millimole per liter, but the U.K. standard we see, the last time we did was, like, uh, 3.3 and uh, not, I mean sorry in August there was 3.3 and it completely went down to 0.5 millimole per liter yeah this is that the, was, uh, yeah. the triglyceride yes. you said. yeah so yes. I, I just shared the screen so we have I just wanted to like show the colors right here so triglyceride cholesterol LDL HDL in February of this year they're basically all red August they're all red October, they're green. Yeah, this is after one month of taking Nanobac TX. Yeah, Only so, one month. Yeah, so you're talking about, um, yeah, the October uh, results, right? And then yes. but your diet, though, because your your diet was uh, keto, right? Low carb keto. Yes, it was there for the past uh, four or five years, but I don't know how I got this triple blockage, triple vessel blockage. Because I don't it, know how. Because it's an infection. Okay. Plaguing is an infection. And people, and I, including myself, we battle 
between veganism and keto carnivore and we go back and forth mm -hmm. but if you have an infection somewhere in your body and it could be anywhere in the body like even in the teeth for example or right here mm -hmm. then you get the placking because the organisms create mucus also known as biofilm and then the immune system has to turn that into stone like it's part of the healing process when you break a bone like your arm it turns back to bone you know yeah. after six weeks so same thing here so, um, but you said that with the keto carnivore diet, you had lost some energy. Is that correct? Yes, I did. Okay. But now it's bad. Now, I mean, yes, now it's, I, I feel, I, I mean, like I don't feel any out of breath when I'm walking in the morning. I walk, start my work around 6.30 in the morning in UK time and uh, almost one and a half to two hours I walk. At uh, not a uh, uh, fast pace, but at a normal regular pace, but I don't feel any congestion in my chest or any uh, pain in my chest or any tightness in my chest. I don't feel out of breath. I'm always, I mean, after the walk, still I, I'm, I feel like that I can walk for another half an hour or so as well after walking for one and a half or two hours in the morning. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so, so that is there. Uh, I mean, uh, and I'm um, I take two meals a day. I mean, I take my breakfast around twelve noon, and that too I take two to three eggs. Still, I'm taking those two to three eggs, and uh, with a cup of coffee with the almond milk, and that's my breakfast. And uh, I take my. Uh, meal evening meal around 6 30 ish i take a bowl of um, salad with all the leafy greens thanks to dr berg um, and uh, then i take my my food and whatever it is but uh, mostly it is uh, meat with a, the with almond bread uh, that's it. And then I don't, after 7, 7 p.m., I don't eat anything till morning. Okay. And then you said mostly meat. What's your favorite meat that you eat the most of? Uh, oh, I mean, it's very hard to get organic meat here and it's very expensive. I cannot afford where do, it. Wait, where do you I, live? Where do you live? I, uh, London. Okay. You're in London. Okay. Yeah. So um, I eat goat meat. I mean, lamb. Uh, I lamb meat and uh, I don't eat chicken. I don't like chicken. You try to eat halal? Is that your yes. religion? Yes, 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 yeah. yes. I eat halal meat, so that's the only um, I eat meat and 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 in fish I eat only salmon. That is wild caught salmon. Yeah. Uh, twice or three times a week I eat salmon um, with my fruit uh, with my sorry vegetable, not fruit. I don't eat, take any kind of fruit apart from. Uh, avocados and that's it yeah so people right now they're asking themselves at least my audience are saying you're eating vegetables and you're eating meat you know you're not really getting into ketosis you've been low carb though for four years yes so. yes yes and i have an experience with a patient he was uh keto this is years ago <clears throat> and his coronary artery calcium score was dropping and then his wife got breast cancer she decided to go vegan so he switched to vegan to help help her out, and his coronary artery calcium score kept dropping. So in my mind, I'm thinking his diet was probably high in junk food, and then he was on really good supplements, you know. So you can still have a really good effect on your cardiovascular health with with vegetables in there, of course. You know whether you're, you know, this much meat and this much vegetables, or the other way around. But I've just, I'm a fan of the more meat diet because it keeps your immune system strong. And that's the, like, that's the deal. Like with placking, I wholeheartedly believe that it's an infection causing the placking. Okay. So um, I like meat and uh, yes, vegetable. I like vegetables. Uh, I don't know. But it's always in a salad form. I don't eat cooked vegetable. It's all salad. And uh, that's it. Uh, that's all. And I, I really feel a lot of improvement. Now, my next question is, how do I know that the, 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 the triple vessel blockage is improving? How do I know that? Right. Uh, 
So I want to share the screen and I'll pull up your previous, your angiogram. Um, I think it's right here, sharing the screen. Yeah, here it is. <clears throat> so it says left main, um, distal left main has mild to moderate 40 to 50%. Stenosis, the LAD, severe 80 to 90% stenosis, left circumflex artery, severe 70 80%. Uh, tandem lesions, it says. Right coronary artery is 100% occluded. The proximal is 80% uh, stenosis. So you redo the coronary angi angiography to see what kind of changes have occurred. Um, so the whole idea about nanobag TX is to clear out those the blockages, right? It's, it's chemistry. Mm -hmm. Right, so you have a lot of calcium there, and then you add the uh, ingredients of the nanobacteriax, and it dissolves the calcium blockages, like the actual rocks, if you will, of calcium, mm -hmm. and it dissolves it into solution, so it becomes soluble, and it just kind of like goes away, like through the bloodstream, it just kind of. And how long will it will that take to to the that process to start with nanobacteriax? I mean, the process started with the first pill, and then the uh, conclusion would be: I, the average answer for everybody is you do this dosage for a, a year. So your mm -hmm. dosage is one pill per twenty pounds of twenty pounds of body weight, um, and then the maintenance dosage would be like three pills a, a night, or something like that. And then I want to share based on your results, I actually started taking it nanobacteriax. And I've been selling it for six years or so. I've never taken it. And the first three nights, my dosage is nine pills, empty stomach before bed. And it was, my brain lit up on fire. Like I was mentally so clear. And I mm -hmm. started doing incredible research, um, new research that I'm, I'm releasing on my YouTube channel. Um, but on the third day, fourth day, I think I, then I got some diarrhea. So I cut back on the dosage. Now I'm at like, I'm just doing right now like three or four per night and I'll bring it back up. And then I have one of my employees, I had her start nanobag TX. Same thing with her. Her brain starts working really well. Mm -hmm. And um, for her, it caused some constipation. So she had to cut back on the dose. But, but, you know, with these pills that work so well, sometimes they have effects on the gut. You just have to make them work. So now with your improved blood work, and then you said you've had other tests since then, and you have another one coming up in December, right? No, that that one was brought forward. The echo test was brought forward last week. They did it last week now. Okay. And then, so what were the results of that? Do you have that yet? They, they will release the result on 27th of November. Okay. So we're just... And looking, the okay. And so the we're just looking for... I'm sorry. Say, say again. And the chest x-ray as well. Same date. Okay, good. So we're just looking for progress. So <clears throat> if there is before and after of the same tests separated by two months or four months, and we can see some improvement, that's what I'm looking for. So it's not like you have 100% blocked artery, and then a month later, it's, you know, completely cleared out like that doesn't mm -hmm. really happen. So if you could get 50% <clears throat> improvement, by February, when your surgery is scheduled, for example, you know, there's an argument there like, hey, I'm doing really good things. I'm doing healthy supplements. I, my diet's good. I've been exercising. I've been walking. Can we delay the surgery for three more months? You know, that would be the proposal that you can ask the doctors, the surgeons. Yeah, that's what my plans are exactly because uh, I don't want to get my chest open for if I'm not, if I, I mean, I'm. I, I now I'm enjoying my lifestyle now. I don't have any problems. Yes, previously before starting this prescription, I was a uh, um, little bit scared. Every day I was in scare that uh, I had a fear that maybe I fall down anytime because, but now I have uh, that confidence in me that I am okay now. Uh, like I don't feel anything. I have strength in me. I have energy in me. I can walk. I can... Uh, like do whatever I can but previously I had that fear in my mind that maybe 
I, 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 I fall down with some heart pain or whatever. So, but right. now I am in much confidence now after one month of taking this nano PX. Okay, good. Now I ask you some other questions about that. Uh, do you also have um, an easier time breathing? Sorry? Do you have an easier time with breathing? Like you can catch a deeper breath, for example? Yes, I mean, uh, yes, okay. Uh, I had one test last week in hospital with, they were checking my lungs and there I was having, I had to breathe in and hold my breath and breathe out very heavily. I, I, I did okay with that as well. Yeah, whereas before you would have had a harder time. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Then they ask you about um, blood pressure. Is oh, that I'm, that's what that's another area that I wanted to discuss with you that my blood pressure is always normal. It always falls between 100 and 110. And uh, uh, the dive is something like uh, 65 and 75, never above that or below that. Yeah, even even a year ago and three years ago, it's always. always... Yes, I never had any blood pressure problem, never. And yeah. and if if you see my uh, result as well, my HbA1c has also fallen down a lot. I mean, at, I mean, it's at five point oh. I think is what I saw. Five. Yes, yes, yes. American. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, but it was how high was it? Five point seven, I think. Yes, five point seven was uh, previously. It was. Yeah. So. Um, so my question here's a here's a million dollar question if you had a low carb diet for four years um like what do you think actually caused the blockage and where i'm kind of going with this is maybe had an infection maybe had maybe have a tooth issue like a chronic infection skin lungs sinuses do you have an idea like what may be a culprit Yes, uh, now I am looking on these lines as well, that maybe I had infection. Previously, I was thinking, I mean, before, I mean, with consultation with you, I thought maybe my parents, but they both had uh, heart problems and both of them died of heart problems. Uh, so maybe because of that, I got this heart problem because I, I, I never feel anything. I was very energetic, though I'm 56 now. Still, I was feeling very energetic and I could jump around and walk around and run around. I never felt that, but uh, this May, after this May, I was a little confused that what went wrong and where and how. Because I was really, everyone, every friend of mine, they were curious that you were really particular about uh, your food. You never had any fizzy drinks, no fruits, no sugar, no bakery, only home cooked food. If I have to eat in a friend's house, they, I would tell them cook anything that is cooked home. That's it. I avoid all kind of oils, only had uh, butter, ghee, or now also again, uh, though my wife, she fights with me that you don't consume too much butter ghee. I said, no, it is good for me. And uh, still I'm consuming butter or ghee. Uh, and um, the pure form of butter. And uh, I every day I take two spoons of uh, olive oil, organic one. That's yeah. every morning I so, so your whole I, life you've been avoiding junk food, right? Yes. No, no yeah. not whole life, but for the when I was diagnosed diabetic. And uh, that's when I started doing research and how I could reverse my uh, diabetic. Uh, what diabetes. year was that? Uh, uh, something like 2017. At okay. that time, I came across your videos and uh, uh, Dr. B uh, Dr. Berg and uh, yeah. so Dr. Wait, Wendell. So wait, but, but what was your diet like before you were diagnosed diabetic? Oh, I could eat anything and sweets and fruits. I love sweets, sweets. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, but fruits as well. But then I, when I, and then again, I mean, like uh, when I was diagnosed and the, the normal doctor, my GP here, he told me, just eat brown bread. It is okay. Brown rice twice a week. And then uh, brown uh, chapati 
every day instead of two, only one. I did that. I followed my GP for three months. And it, I mean, and with metformin every day from two to, I went to five metformin per day, two in the morning, one in the e afternoon and one in two in the evening, five metformin I was taking. And then I knew my fate, where I'm going, where I'm heading. Because uh, when I was diagnosed uh, diabetic, my mother died and I had to fly back to Pakistan. And then I started realizing, okay, this is where I'm heading to. And my father was alive at that time, but he was also um, sick and couldn't walk and everything. So I could see my, my, my future where I'm heading. So I started doing research and then I came across first you and then uh, one of your video that really inspired me was um, um, the, the heart. You had, a, it's an old video where you say what, lacking does to your heart and then there's two videos that inspired me um, one was about heart how the placking happens to you and one was about this um, and it's, it's a long video but there you explained about this uh, uh, I forgot I, 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 I watched it twice to understand the, the whole process of this uh, sugar when we take sugar what happened the byproduct the, the, the waste of sugar um, oh I lactic remember. acidosis lactic acidosis yes yeah. that was the i As think an... every human being should watch that video every human being to understand what is happening if you consume too much sugar right yeah it took me um probably three years to really get a grasp of what that was and i learned a lot from the doctors from the 1930s and 40s because everybody understood it back then all the all the doctors and students of medicine they were trying to fix uh, chronic illness by fixing lactic acidosis which mm -hmm. was a mechanism but they weren't really getting to the cause which at the time was and still is white sugar um refined flour and now we have seed oils unlike ever yes before. so that's a uh, very damaging so yeah so um, I have this, I'm working with this theory now about, um, we know that LDL is antimicrobial. So when mm -hmm. people eat too much junk food, it tears up their, their uh, tissues, like seed oils are very damaging to tissues. And I have a lot of studies that show that. And then you have, now you have dead tissue or damaged tissue, and then bacteria and other organisms come in and they eat that. That's their food. And then LDL goes up because it's antimicrobial, you know, it's mm -hmm. part of the immune system. And insulin goes up because it's a side effect of an infection. And glucose goes up because the body's trying to feed the white blood cells. So um, this is gonna take me another four to six months to figure out, you know, if somebody has, you know, a diagnosis of heart disease because they have high lipids, et cetera, high triglycerides, it's more, it's not like, heart disease, it's more like it's an infection caused by junk food diet. And same thing with diabetes. It's more of an infection, but it's caused by a junk food diet. So anyways, um, I'll be, you know, posting videos about that. I also wanted to say that your um, inflammation marker C-reactive protein was always normal. So you can yes. have, yeah, you can have these problems and have like uh, low um, inflammation as as measured by that. So the next step for you, let me go to your um, your list of supplements, and I can I'm going to share the screen actually, so people can see like what I have you on. So under the plan, we got Nano Back TX right here, and then yes. eat before sleep. And no other supplements past three p.m. And then this one's called H heart, and that's two. That's to nourish the heart. Yes, yeah. I will get that. I will. Uh, I mean, I'll get those uh, uh, those uh, medicine on uh, Sunday. This Sunday. Okay, so they're in transit. Okay. Yes, they are still in transit. I mean, my father-in-law is oh. with them. They might okay. Sunday. Okay, so there's. I want to add a product, and you can probably just get this one locally. Um, it's a vitamin K. Okay. K2? Like, 
Yeah, well, there's actually uh, K7. There's several different versions of vitamin K. I'm already taking vitamin K2 Mark 7, MK7. Good. Yeah, okay, good. So I'm going to put that in here just as a placeholder so that I, so that I know you're on it. Okay, it's called concentrated K2. Oh, okay, I I I want to, I was coming on that as well because though I'm taking this nanobacterx and I will be starting the H heart 60C, but I'm still on my I'm still taking my uh, my other um, uh, vitamins as well like mag magnesium glycinate 350, my omega 3 2000 the highest uh, potency, vitamin K2 MK7, and my vitamin D3. Okay, I take uh, my a, 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 a C V apple cider vinegar in the morning as well. So, so, so I wanted to ask you. So, I need to continue with those. Yeah, I'd recommend you stay with those. Okay, but I have to take everything before three p.m. every day. Before I mean, after three p.m., I don't take those vitamins. Correct. Yep. Okay, and then um, the next thing to do is to see if you're in ketosis. I don't think we talked about that yet. No. Okay, so you just pee on the stick, you know, by the little ketone. I have, keto I have ketometer, I have it. Okay, blood or urine? Blood, blood. Okay, good. So just do that sometimes and do it like um, before sleep. Um. So usually what time do you wake up? You eat breakfast at what, 8.30 you said or? No, 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 no. Breakfast is around 12 p.m. Oh, so you, so you skip, yeah, you skip the whole morning. Oh. Okay. Um, so right before you have your first meal, uh, take your ketones and just see if you have ketosis or, you know, see if okay. you have ketones in your blood. And then let okay. me get results on that. Okay, good. And what about my the medication, my other medication that my doctor prescribed me? Like uh, I take beta blocker in the evening, that's a bisoprolol, uh, 1.25 1 1 milligram, I remipril again for my blood pressure, bisoprolol for my blood pressure. I take those and uh, Let me I... To that, before you go any further, I got to ask. So I'm a chiropractor, so I can't talk about drugs. I know, I know, I know. So you gotta, okay. okay. But you, so you got to talk to the MD about that. And, um, but you're always tracking for like, if, like, if your blood pressure starts to go way too low, like 90 over 50 or something, you got to tell your MD mm -hmm. and, uh, he can like reduce the dosage of the beta blocker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And what about my statins? Uh, though I've never taken it, uh, I take it on and off my once a week. My statin 40 milligram, and there's another one that doctor prescribed azitimib 10 milligram combination of both of these. But I don't take them on a regular basis, maybe once a week I take. Well, that's the same answer. So, okay, you have to tell your medical doctor. And here's what I coach my patients to say just say that you're doing healthy things with your diet and supplements and exercise, and that you're your lipids are better, right? You got the lab test. You feel so much yeah. better. And then you ask, um, is it possible I can reduce or get off the sad medications and just see mm -hmm. what they say? And they have also prescribed me aspirin as well, but I'm not taking it because I'm already on a healthy diet. I, I don't f see any reason that I need a blood thinner. Right, okay, yeah. Every, every cardiologist would disagree with that. But... And again, it's between you and your medical doctor. Okay. 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 Yeah, ketosis makes the blood real thin. So you already have mm -hmm. your thin, thin blood if you're in ketosis, whereas sugar, you know, makes the blood real sticky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll I'll start uh, checking my ketones every morning then. Yeah. Okay. Good. Let me type that in. <clears throat> And I'll keep you posted on those as well. So what are the readings? Yeah, send an email. Okay, good. Anything else to go over? Uh, um, my food, I, I carry on with whatever food I'm taking. Yeah. yeah. So there's no... 
Yeah. Uh, because my wife, my wife just asked me to ask you. I'm eating eggs and everything and butter and stuff like that. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. There's no science. There's no actual clinical scientific experiment that has proven that eggs, butter, or meat causes any disease. Okay. There's just a bunch of um, hypotheses based on these large epidemiological surveys that are not scientific. So yeah, mm -hmm. eggs have never caused heart disease ever in the history of humanity. So there's a lot of people that would argue that against that, but there's no there's no science to back up that idea that meat causes disease or eggs. So that's good. Now I think that <clears throat> I think that you're probably in ketosis by the time you have lunch, you know, like before noon. Mm -hmm. And then when you eat some of the plants, you might come out of ketosis, which is totally fine. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my guess what is what's happening. You're in ketosis and you're out of ketosis in every 24 hours, which is fantastic. Okay, it's really good. One question is bothering me. What should be my sugar level after food? Well, if I want to be in ketosis, what should be my sugar level if I want to be in ketosis? Well, after in, food. Yeah, in American terms, it would be like up to one, 120, maybe. No, no, no. I don't believe in American terms. I believe in what... Uh, no, I mean, no, I'm saying like in the, in our metric, I, I, you know, not in our, in the way that we, we uh, measure it, it'd be like in ketosis, your blood sugar is probably like at 80. And then um, it goes, it might go up to 120 based on your, on what you're eating, mm -hmm. right? which is fine. And then it, I'm guessing, and then it would come down back to 80 or something like that overnight. Because because every time uh, after food, my sugar is somewhere around uh, 107 to 18. And that also bothers me. I, I, I was thinking maybe I need to go, even after food, I need to go below 100. No, is that's that really good. That? It's No, it's totally fine. 107, 108 is really good. It's very. It tells us you're very low carb. Um, insulin is under control. You know, your body is running on glucagon, which is better than insulin for digestion. That's yeah, perfect. It's really good. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. So I don't have to be worried about my glucose after my sugar level after meal if it goes to 107, 108, something oh. like that. No, that's really good. But doesn't it take me out of ketosis if it goes up to 100? Well, it depends on your ketone numbers. So if okay. your ketone numbers are 0 0.6, for example, and your glucose is 107. I think you might be right on the edge of being in ketosis. Okay. You know, you might even be in ketosis because because there's, there's that GKI gluco glucose ketone index. Are you familiar with mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Yeah. So as long as your GKI is uh, below nine, then you're in ketosis. You're you're okay. doing really really well. You're doing better than ninety nine point nine nine percent of all heart patients in the world. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, cool. So let me... Um, are you set up for your next visit? Yes, yes. I have four appointments set up okay, for good. the next one. Cool. So then we'll just talk at the next visit. Keep me updated. Okay. Yeah, send emails. Keep me updated on the lab test. I will do that. Okay, good. All right. Good. I, 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 definitely, I'm going to request if they call me for surgery, I'm definitely going to request them for an angiogram first before they do. And I will tell them that I want, since I'm not mentally prepared, you can cut this uh, part from your video if you want, but I just want to tell you that I will ask them that I need to delay it for another six months or so if they bring me and they call me around uh, end January, February. Yeah, and just see what they say. Yeah. 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 Very good. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mohammed, good talk with you. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Bye. Bye.